welcome to Stockholm. This is your very first fight in Europe, if I'm not mistaken, correct? That's correct. Um, what different challenges does that pose to you in regards to camp and travel and things of that nature? You know what, uh, as far as uh, Sweden goes, it wasn't too bad just because it's very, very similar to America in the sense that uh, the accessibility to uh, the marketplace and your, the water you want and so on. So it wasn't so bad. Um, I've been to other places and it's been it's like other third world places has been kind of tough in those areas. Over here it's been a very easy transition. Um, so on top of that, I have a little experience now, so that probably helps. Okay. Um, this is your first fight at Featherweight, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. Why did you decide to enter the Featherweight division? Well, you know, uh, I spent like half my career at Lightweight, and um, I felt strong there until I got to UFC. In the UFC, you find out that, you know, uh, dealing with big, big, big 155ers and, and all, all the way across the board for the most part. So um, after I took my loss, which is my first loss I ever take, I've ever taken, so uh, I, once I reevaluated everything, if I want to stay here and be serious about my career, um, it, it was a move I needed to take just so I could be stronger, have someone similar in height, you know, just make it so it's not so advantageous for my opponent. Um, the featherweight division seems to be the, the talking point of the UFC at the moment. Uh, with uh, Conor McGregor specifically, um, what's your take on Conor McGregor at the moment? Well, you know, I think he's a, I think he's pretty brash and he talks a lot of, uh, you know, he talks a lot of stuff. You know, he hypes up the fight pretty well. But the fact is, he does have a skill set. He, he can't, you can't take out the fifth rank uh, fighter like Dustin Poirier without being a legitimate uh, threat. I think what makes him just more legitimate is the fact that he's left-handed and he does different sorts of kicks and then pushes and, and punches and that's what makes him just awkward but once someone figured one, one thing out or two things out of him I don't think he'll take out Aldo or anything like that hopefully I can climb the rankings and get, one, get a shot at him too well that was going to be my follow up question actually um, did you see a piece that the UFC released last week called Conor McGregor versus the featherweights by any chance I did not no it was a, it was a piece basically with McGregor breaking down the top four or five guys uh, in the division um, so now asking a fellow featherweight in yourself if you were to get in the uh, cage with McGregor um, break down the fight and how do you beat Conor McGregor wrestle him yeah. you wrestle him do jiu jitsu cause not to say that he's not savvy in those areas but obviously his strength is in striking so he, he talks so much stuff and he gets people's heads where they want to hit him and that's understandable but the fact that they let that play their emotions play out too much they should be more strategical push him against the cage take him down and then see what he's really about i doubt he's a black belt level i know he's strong but um, that's going to be an easier path to wrestle jiu-jitsu you probably even get a submission off him because he's the thing about the, the double-edged sword is uh, when someone's that strong and athletic they generally get a little less technical in their, in their jiu-jitsu and wrestling because they rely so much on their strength and ability. So I think that would be something that he would have uh, exposed, be exposed down the line. And I think that would be a way of life. Well, let's talk about your opponent, Zavara Tukagov. Um, break down this fight. How do you beat a guy like Zavara? Well, Zavara's hard, man. The, guy, the guy's a pit bull. You know, the, guy, the guy hits hard, his hands are loose, his footwork is fantastic. Um, he has a good sprawl. But I think... Uh, I think what, what some of, I've seen in the past like nine fights of him. I think one of the problems is that people have is uh, they try to just strike with him and play his game. They let they let him dance around. They let him get his spacing, and you just can't do it with that. So I think I'm going to be taking away that, putting a lot of pressure on him. Um, whether it be wrestling or not, I, I can throw hands with anyone. So uh, we can throw hands, we can wrestle, we can grapple. But I'm going to just be in the space and not give him that kind of uh, allotment of time to to go ahead and get his groove going. How did experience in your first career loss change you? Did, are you the guy, kind of guy that takes benefits from that or is there not much you can take from it? Yes, uh, you know, they always say, you know, the whole uh, cliche that you learn a lot from, a, you know, more from a loss than a win. And it's true uh, for me, at least in this instance. Uh, there was a lot of things that maybe I, I changed up in my camps that I thought were going to be beneficial for me, and they weren't. And they were just maybe because everyone's people were doing it. Um, any sort of decision that I was kind of on the fence about before, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make the move or adjustments because of my camps, because I thought this and that, you know, I just made the decision. It was, it become, things become pretty clear for you after that moment. And, um, so yeah, I made the adjustments. And one of the adjustments was cutting down the 45. I mean, that's something that my camps have been talking to me about for a long time because of my height my length, um, but I always said, well, until I get until I get beat, in fact, I, you know, I came all the way from 70, went to 55, just because after a while, it getting smaller, um, and then it just, 
it's evolution of the, you know, of the process. So, um, yeah, it, you do learn a lot, um, but in the very end, like, I think just being in the UFC in general, just, you just learn a lot. Like, you learn that there's um, things like media day, there's things like uh, when you go to different countries, like the accessibility to the food and water and things like that, they, they are not the most common things, or you just think they're the most common things coming from America. Speaking of different countries, you fought in Brazil, haven't you? Yeah, how does fighting in Brazil compare to coming over to Europe and fighting in Sweden? The whole preparation, the, the lead up building up to the fight. Oh, you know what? Um, I would say that it's a lot more organized over here in Europe. And then that's not say, I, know, I don't know how the UFC does it, but the fact is, uh, it just seems a lot smoother here. And I actually like the place, man. The I like the weather, I like the people. It's a lot nicer, you know. Um, yeah, so I, because it is that way, the transition was easy. I would say the flights are still always tough, you have jet lag. Um, but if you do the right adjustments, you know, go to sleep at the right time to make the adjustments prior to going and when you come, um, it should be no problem. Um, just finally, I've got a question for you regarding the breaking news last night. I don't know if you've heard about this, uh, but Kang Lee uh, was busted for performance enhancing drugs and was uh, subsequently uh, suspended for nine months uh, by the UFC. What's your, uh, well, first of all, did you know about that? No, I, I think I saw on Facebook this morning, like something, someone said something like that, like, oh, it just doesn't make you a better fighter or something, you know, right, right, and then right. it has his face. But, I mean, I, you know what's what? your reaction to Kung Lee being busted for drugs there? You know what, I, from my understanding, the UFC has like a totally like zero tolerance policy. So the fact that he got, you know, he got he used the product and then he got caught for it and he got suspended, then that's just, that's exactly what should happen because he knew, what, you know, what he was doing. Like, yeah, if you never do something bad and you get caught, you can't get mad at the system. Do you think there's a performance enhancing drug problem in MMA at the moment? You know what? I go to a lot of several camps and I don't see it run rampant. I have seen it with like lower promotions. I have seen it, you know, in, in history. But like I think uh, many for history it's there, but um, it's not rampant where I'm saying like that. I, I have seen it so people but never like, never in the UFC at least, you know. Thank you very much.